Meet the Candidate Series. The Arc of Pennsylvania hosts an interview with Nancy Gentz, candidate for Montgomery and Philadelphia County's 152nd House District, by Lisa Scanlon, caregiver and DSP of her son, Dave, who is a self-advocate. The Meet the Candidate Series is an opportunity for individuals with disabilities and their families to hear from candidates on disability issues. Candidates from all parties have been invited to participate in the series. The Arc of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates. Hello, uh, welcome to the Arc of Pennsylvania's Meet the Candidate uh, Zoom series. Uh, we're very excited to have with us uh, Nancy Genst, who is running for the House of Representatives in the 152nd House District, which is, that covers Montgomery and Philadelphia counties. And she is running for the seat that is currently held by uh, Representative Tom Mert, who is retiring this year. Uh, Nancy's a native resident of Hatboro, and she was first, she was elected as the first female mayor in history of Hatboro in 2017. She's a U.S. Army veteran and community advocate. Some of her key platforms are an economy that works for all, improving education funding for our kids in schools, advocating for disabilities, women, LGBTQ, and minority rights, and climate change. So welcome, Nancy. We're so glad you could join us today. Thank you for having me here. It's a real honor to be with you all. And then, of course, today, uh, these candidate series are driven by our chapters, which we have Pat Leo with the ARC Alliance, and we have Shane Janik with the ARC of Philadelphia, and they are going to be introducing the self-advocates, or Shane will be introducing self-advocate that will be asking Nancy the question today. And Nancy, just to give you a little background of why we're doing this is that we think it's important uh, to get to know the future candidates or the, maybe a future house member and also to connect you to the Arc of Pennsylvania, but really to hear the questions uh, from our self-advocates because the decisions, if you get to Harrisburg, the many decisions that you will make um, really are about the self-advocates and about their services and their rights. So um, that is why they're asking the tough questions today. And they're really not that tough. We told you that before. So. Um, Shane, I'm going to turn it over to you if you would like to introduce. Yep. Well, again, Nancy, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Lisa Scanlon. She is uh, the parent of our self-advocate, Dave. Um, I hope Dave can hop in, but uh, Lisa will be speaking on behalf of Dave. And uh, if he can join in the screen for a couple questions, we'll see if he comes around to getting uh, some screen time in. Um, but Dave's mother, Lisa, uh, she's, a, um, she's an RN and she's actually employed as Dave's uh, DSP staff as well. So she um, is his staff for his home and community, uh, for his home and community based services. Um, so a couple questions actually related to their family as well. And um, Lisa has utilized our adult advocacy services at the Ark of Philadelphia. So we're glad that she's able to join with Dave today. And I'll turn it over to Pat. Hi, I'm Pat Leo, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the ARC Alliance. We provide services in Philadelphia, but we are the ARC in Montgomery County. We provide sports coordination, guardianship services, and early intervention services. Thank you. It was very nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, um, well, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa and Dave, and... I'm going to be turning off my camera. So uh, thank you, Lisa, for doing this. And thank Dave also, please. Yes, thank you. All right, we ready for the first question? You sure. <laughs> okay. What do you think Pennsylvania should do to assist families and caregivers of people with disabilities? Well, first, I think as individuals, um, we need to educate ourselves on uh, the needs of our um, family of disability, we, our community of disability. We need to understand that caregivers need a lot of support. 
And during this time with COVID, and there's so much isolation that's happening right now that it is becoming a real problem. As a, a state, we need to have more family support than we have. So we need to invest money into that. Uh, we have been able to find a lot of uh, money out there for other causes right now. And we have to remember that our community of, of disabled people are just as important as everybody else. And they need more help now more than ever. Okay, thank you. What investments will you make in expanding long-term services and supports in the community for people with disabilities? And as usual, this, this comes down to money and budgeting. You know, when historically, when, when the house cannot uh, streamline a budget, one of the first things that they cut into is the Human Services Committee. And this needs to stop. I know, um, you know, Tom Mert led that committee and did a, a good job. So I really hope that I can be assigned there so I can be a, a, a large advocate to the, this community. And, um, but as always, it, it comes down to money. And, you know, we need to increase that. Okay. And how will you work against the needless institutionalization of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Um, are we talking about the few big institutions that are still open here? Because they need to close down. And I believe that there's too much isolation going on there. And we need to um, put this money into community homes where individuals have individual attention and caring and guidance that they're not getting in these big institutions that are still left out there. That money needs to be diverted into the, into the communities. Okay. And how will you work to address the shortage of direct support professionals? Well, first of all, I think the pay scale is way too low for the job that advocates are doing. We have to make sure that they have proper PPE, that they have um, paid sick leave, um, you know, access to health care for themselves, and especially bringing up their, their, their wage and, and things like that. And I think that will address uh, some of the problem. Okay. What steps will you take to reduce the risk of crimes committed against people with disabilities? Well, first of all, and unfortunately, a lot of staff, um, you know, a, a lot of our disabled community have a hard time speaking for themselves. So uh, the most important thing is we have to strengthen prevention of this. And, you know, some ways to do that are much more stricter background checks on, say, individuals that might transport members of our disability community out to school or, 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 or to work or whatever. So I think it's really important to strengthen our background checks on people that in, in the satellite areas are dealing with our disabled community. I think it's really important. I think a lot of it comes down to, that, to uh, you know, prevention. Um, and also we have to take a look at in our community homes, you know, with the isolation and all that's going on as well, um, abuse is just, the level of abuse has risen. I see it as I, I'm being the mayor and have her oversee the police department here. And our, and our number of domestic abuse cases has grown over the last few months due to the isolation and anxiety that's happening out there. And the same is gonna come over through to our disability um. community. So we, we have to all keep our eyes open, be aware, and especially stress prevention. Okay. And what steps will you take to ensure that the education system in Pennsylvania meets the needs of all children, especially those with disabilities? Well, I think that we have to always continue to look, look at the IDEA Act. Um, 
you know, that was specifically put in there for Individual Disabilities Education Act. But I haven't really seen much updates from there since probably 2015. And I think we just need to um, keep looking at that and see where we need to keep expanding it. Every person in our community deserves to be treated the same way. And we cannot have exceptions to that law. The other, What's thing, that? The, other, the other thing is, you know, there was an article in Forbes magazine just this past week. And I find it frightening that uh, in bold letters that came down from the federal government, Title II of the Americans with Disability Act should not prevent any school from offering educational programs to distance instruction. The distance instruction really um, affects our disability community kids. Um, because they need to have the interaction. Uh, they, they need to get out of the isolation in order to help themselves. And then down below, I had to find this one paragraph that really bothered me, that the Secretary of Education, is, they're giving the Secretary of Education 30 days to prepare a report with recommendations on any additional waivers the secretary believes are necessary to be enacted into law under the IDA and what they might need to just uh, ignore at this point, which is, is a terrible thing that, that should come down. So we need to keep an eye on that. And God forbid they make any changes to this during this administration. We just need to get back out there and change it back to what it needs to be. Okay, thank you. What ways will you promote meaningful employment opportunities in your district for individuals with disabilities? Well, I, I think um, a successful way that we can, we can work on um, is with tax cuts to employers. Um, I think incentives are always a good way to promote participation in this. And then we really need to highlight these businesses that do participate um, in, in uh, providing employment opportunities for our disability community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy and Lisa. Um, Great questions. No, I, I would just um, echo what Sherry mentioned. Um, you know, as as you move along in your candidacy, um, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to the local ARC chapters, um, the ARC affiliate and the ARC alliance um, that'll be in your district. Um, some of those questions are, are a part of our legislative agenda. And so, you know, as some specific areas come up that, that you would like to reach out about, you know, we would, we would um, definitely be able to help you out along the way and, and would appreciate, you know, having that connection as you move, move along. I really appreciate that. And I will be reaching out to you. Don't worry. <laughs> Pat, any final words? Thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to possibly working with you in the future. And as Shane said, if you ever need assistance, you could reach out to either one of us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for having me today. Much Thank you.